I I dabble in French just because I have French friends and I took a little bit of French, but okay. I like French. So that's always, that's one of my. Past but see, times. I've heard that like <laughs> if you know Spanish, then you could also dabble in Italian because they're. Both I'm pretty kind of, sure. Yeah, like if, I Portuguese. Think, no, the Portuguese I hear is a fucking tough language. <laughs> is yeah. It? yeah, that one it I've probably heard is, is a yeah. bitch to learn. But I've heard that the Spanish and Italians can roughly understand each, each other. other. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I feel just like in their so common, you know. Communication of wor- of general words, but French as well. That's a great one. I want to know. I, I love French because so well, bad. because I, for me, French is just so sexy. I know, right? It plays so well. And I just ours. like it, dude. It's just like it's like if you know French, it's like if you're drinking a really, you know, like drinking a really good glass of like this beautiful rosé we're drinking now. You know, and you have a little French accent. Like, how sexy is that? I know. And imagine being able to, like, pronounce it, like, with Properly? A, yeah. Like, not sound like a white trash piece of shit that drinks wine out of a box. Yeah, or like, yeah, or like a poser. Yeah, for sure, dude. I don't even know how to start with that word, so I'm not. <laughs> yeah, so, I get it. Yeah, you know, that's bad radio, because we're talking about things you can have to see. But, at the same time, it's funny, because that would be... That's, that is a sexy fucking language. You know? It's uh, it's one of my favorites. I just think it's so sexy. It's just so nice. It's just like everything that comes from the French. I don't cook a lot of France? French food. I haven't. That's one of my dreams is to – I've never been to Europe, so hopefully after COVID we can head to Europe for, for a little bit. Um, But definitely would love to visit France. It's just like one of those places that just exudes like elegance and sexiness and food and wine. And for me, like I love that shit. Like – that's my. That's why I'm in hospitality. <laughs> you know, I'm Just in hospitality like is because because I can, as a as a cook as a chef, like the reasons why I I have these opportunities are because I'm in the hospitality industry. I get to eat caviar and and drink good wine and have good charcuterie. And when you can do that, it makes it worth the worth everything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that's why I love to be like a cook because I get to experience a lot of cool shit. What's the best city that you have visited for food? Mexico City, hands down. Right now. As of, as of right now. Mexico yeah. City. Best in the States that has the best thing going for them? Mm, shit. Can't say Denver. No, not Denver. I would say the well, the last like really cool food trip that I took. Yeah, to, that would be cool. I mean, I went uh, – Portland was really cool. Yeah. Portland has some good stuff going on, like really, really good food. And it's I a like. lot of that smaller stuff. You know, we spoke of like you yeah. know, hole in the walls and food trucks. They have like communities of those where they that's all yep. they do is like everyone lives off each other in that. But at the same time, Portland's a very interesting place. It's a it, – it, We yeah. visited it during COVID. Uh, How know, was that during COVID? Uh, it wasn't actually – like everybody was respectful. You yeah. Know, like they were – more progressive cities were playing more by the rules, mm. um, which was nice, you know. So everybody yeah. went, but once you sit down, everything's normal again, you know. Yeah. And so we had reservations, we did wine country things for. Nice. We had a hotel, and again, everybody was respectful. Yeah. Um, so That's also funny. Like bad. traveling during during COVID was I I didn't take a lot of trips. I took like two, but I mean it wasn't. I mean there was a lot of people freaking out. Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, you're traveling, and I was like, what fifth trip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got places to do. But for me, what was interesting when I – because, like you said, we have things to do. I had things to do, so I had to fly to the East Coast. And it was just interesting to see what was going on in different cities Mm -hmm. at different points. Now, see, over there, back east, where it's more densely populated, it was a little bit more fucked up. Yeah, and I saw that firsthand. Yeah, and that would probably discourage one from wanting to travel more. So when you hear that guff that's not well received in Mississippi from New Yorkers. Yep. It's because they have two different fucking experiences. Yeah, I mean or Florida. <laughs> yeah, I mean they never even close. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, to be fair, yeah. their death count wasn't that of New York who had to shut down and obliterate small businesses and what happened, you know, they were stonewalled across the board. It was like, definitely you know, different wrecking. different situations and different times. They built fucking kiosk bars out in the streets of New York to just have open airway systems. They could yep. have just busted out the U and Bruto and they would have been compliant by yeah. New York standard. You know, like it was yep. a very I mean the field goal posts were moved, so I do feel bad for Yeah, that. and it's just like different states are different, like you know, like they How do you think different. we handled it as a restaurant you know, chef and, you know, someone yeah, that was, that was affected by it. Yeah. I, I feel, I feel like we did a good job. 
I feel like I personally, as a, I guess I consider myself a middle class citizen living in Denver, Colorado, I think I did pretty well through it all. And, I, I think and it's I'm because the they kept way. me safe and they, I, I stayed employed. I continued to pay rent and then I came out of it and with a job. So it was like as a middle class citizen, I said I did pretty well because they did a good job. Yeah, and you know, I, I think you're one of the lucky ones. But you've also like we've told the story. You're not. It's not lucky. It's you worked your dick off. I you worked know, my so, ass off. Yeah, yeah, during the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like that's one reason. Like let's not say that. You know, you don't give credit to the government. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you give. The credit. I was like, no, it. not to the government. No. I, I give credit to but, uh, my fucking uh, holy stars that take care of me or whatever it is. You know, I Those don't. that are above. The, the the above people that take care of me. I don't care. Um, somebody is. I, I am appreciative for me coming out of COVID with a job and doing the shit that I love to do, which is cook and light shit on fire. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> Tease us with a little something for, let's say, somebody that may be coming through Memorial Day or this summer. What can we expect on the menu before we dive into – the super secret menu question of the night. What can we expect of the menu for the folks next week? So we have we have a couple grill events lined up. The first one's in January. I'm sorry, not January, fucking June. It's in June. That's the first one of the summer series. We have three. Okay, nice. Oh, okay. Tell me more about the summer series, please. It's just the grill summer series. It's You're it's sun's sun's everything? out, sun's out, guns out, dude. So <laughs> is it gonna be an all day thing? Or uh, you, they usually time? are. They usually are. They they run about. I usually start that thing around noon, okay. and it ends around nine. Okay. So it's like a nine, ten hour thing. Fuck we yeah. just grill in, like just having a good time, good music, mezcal is flowing, tacos are flowing, like it's just it's a it's a good time, dude. <laughs> Fucking love it. Yeah. You come here you're gonna have a good time. You're gonna have a good some good tacos, some good mezcal, and listen to some good music and watch us cooking that on that thing that's pretty well. I was just thinking about mezcal, and I was like, what's the preferred <laughs> way to drink it? Because I feel like it's just been like an insert mezcal. And then All right, so let's mezcal. have a little – we'll have a little class on mezcal, so I'll, I need to pour some mezcal. We'll pause it. All right. We're going to have a little bit of – um, we're having some raicilla. So raicilla essentially is mezcal, but um, it comes from the state of Jalisco instead of uh, your traditional mezcal coming from Oaxaca or Michoacán. Um, so a little further north? Uh, from Oaxaca, yes. It's on the coast um, of Mexico. So take a little whip. So what you were saying right now, you know, you you correlate mezcal to being smoky. But it doesn't have to be smoky necessarily because there's different types of agaves that grow in different regions of the country or of the state. This one in particular is grown in Jalisco, which is um, – it's on the coast, so you're going to have a lot of uh, herbal notes to this as well. So if you take a little drink. Not smoky, like your traditional mezcal. It's like very herbaceous, very peppery. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, I guess I don't taste smokiness either, but at the same time, I, I think I'm often told or I smell or – taste what i'm often told yeah. rather than knowing you know like if i went into something blind in that i'd be like just like wine right yeah i mean i i'm the first to admit i'm not someone that's going to sit here and like off the nose fucking tell you what wine we're drinking or anything of the sort and yeah. the same would be for off the taste buds with mezcal because it kind of i mean it gives me a, a couple of different things going on mm -hmm. at the same time so yeah. for me to grasp it Peppery, I guess, would be one that is described. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, I think. But I mean, I could sit here and drink this all day. Right. It doesn't make you wince. Nope. It just kind of is a subtle flavor. And then it and just, just kind of dissipates. Yeah, kind of, and it over like just takes your tongue and then you drink and it swallows and it's gone. Yeah. So we like, we taste. we drink a lot of mezcal at the restaurant. Okay. <laughs> well, salute to the crew over here. So yeah. they have a nice selection. I mean, I don't know much about it, but I really feel like Chris is really. 
I'll bring Chris back up. He's doing. I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we should talk to Chris. And yeah, because Chris <laughs> is here and talk to you about Mexico City and fucking this guy. Oh, I love all it. Fucking day. I love it. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll bring Chris back in. We'll do another episode <laughs> as well. But we had to learn about what's going on in the Brudo kitchen. One hundred percent. Yeah. And before we leave, I have two questions for you that we like to ask all of our guests. Let's so do it. Don't feel special, but you will be judged based off of your answers. <laughs> The right. first question is, you mentioned you had those 15-hour days. <clears throat> Let's say that maybe it's Pony Up is closed that day or <laughs> you worked to past Pony Up's closing time. What's that one snack that you have in maybe a pantry or the refrigerator that you go to every time right before bed or at, just after a long day when you kick your feet up? You just have to have. Dips. Dips. Are they homemade? Are you? Are you? Do you have a brand I, that you I, can put us I on? I purchase and I make, so both. But so tell us who you purchase first, because I imagine everybody would love to know. People who the are gonna. People chef. are gonna make fucking fun of me because you know. Don't say content. No, I won't. But no, because I I cook really dank food, but I also eat like shit. So. Cheers, One, I yeah. Popeyes. <laughs> yeah, pop, yeah, dude, Popeyes is great. I know. God. <laughs> you so, could be more right. Uh, buffalo chicken dip from fucking Sam's. Uh, You're a Sam's Club guy over a Costco guy? No, no, Cut I'm a this Costco. Episode, Zane. No, fuck that. No, I'm I'm a Costco guy, 100. percent But they don't carry the buffalo chicken dip. I literally have a, I have a membership at Sam's just to go buy the buffalo chicken dip. That's it. That's all I buy at Sam's. I buy everything else at Costco. But Sam's has the oh, buffalo so chicken dip. Okay. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. Buffalo chicken dip and just uh, – So is it like well-cooked chicken, mince, not too like heavy on the mayo slash ranch? Yeah, it's more of like, like – a, a buffalo a chicken forward. forward. Yeah. It's not as like creamy-based. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's sad to admit, but that's that's what Dude, I eat when I get home. Dude, don't apologize at <laughs> all. I eat so awful as someone that gets to interview like <laughs> chefs that are like, oh, I'm doing wondrous things with like nah. herbal flower or edible flowers. And yeah, I'm like, exactly. Oh, I ate seven chicken dinners and four <laughs> biscuits for lunch for Popeyes. Yeah, yeah. So and that I paid in one dollar bills. Exactly. <laughs> and I eat chips and salsa for dinner every <laughs> night. That's exactly what I eat. Okay, so yeah. Do you have a salsa brand that? You Not necessarily. I haven't you found one that I like, but we we make a really good one. When we were doing uh, pop ups, we did. We were actually we had some that we were giving out to friends, and it was just fresh salsa from the garden. That we were growing, so fresh tomatoes, fresh jalapenos, fresh Dude, onions. you're growing on the wall here. I'm gro- we I are mean, tomatoes vegetables. wouldn't survive that. Not anybody. tomatoes, but we are growing all of Are you our going herbs? Herbs. No, we're going Great British Baking Show. <laughs> you got to say herbs. Herbs. <laughs> herbs, yeah. Although yours is sexier. I'll give it to you. For the ladies, yeah, that, that's in French. It's because it's in French. You know? it's and that's just in the accent. It's not even the actual word for herbs I know. in just French. Say, just say it. It's herbs. It's herbs. That's what I'll play. <laughs> All right, uh, but yeah, we we got some shit growing on the wall. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, just uh, herbs and, and and things that we're gonna garnish dishes with. But downstairs as well. Yep, just really fun to be able to have our own ecosystem within the restaurant. So that's a very Kelly move. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so last question of the night. This is the hardest hitting question we ask everybody, and we do it right before we hit an hour, so we don't keep people too long. Dun dun dun. I know we're doing well with this. We're doing well. <laughs> okay, so question is. Tomorrow you die. Tonight is your last supper. You probably killed somebody, maybe two people, so it's it's a pretty gruesome death. A lot of people yeah. are cheering and all. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> you can have three people, dead or alive, join you for your last supper, but they cannot be friends or family. Dope. I, I and mean. you have to tell us what we're having for supper. Done. I'm turning my mic off. Go for it. All right. Anthony Bourdain, Stevie Nicks. And Prince. God damn it. That is an excellent three <laughs> for the listeners at home that has to rank in our – we. I mean – Dude, well, straight up, I just I just want to pick their fucking brains. Like, I just want to – Prince and we is such a great answer. And then Bourdain is 1A all the time. That's a great answer. That's just me personally because I'm a fucking Bourdain horror fan. I mean, I think we all are. You know? We, I mean, like yeah. – <sighs> That's a great threesome. Yeah. I mean, Stevie, and this would be Nick's. I mean, oh, come on, man. Lady. I have so many questions for Stevie. Yeah, dude. She was just 
I'm in love with you, Stephen Nicks. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that comes. My love for Stephen Nicks comes from my wife. She introduced me to uh, um, Fleetwood, S- Mac? Fleetwood Mac, and and, and uh, so I can't take credit. But I knew why she was in love with her. <laughs> do you and yeah, do, do your wife's like I would leave you for Stephen Nicks? Yeah, like, I, I, oh, I'm yeah, pretty sure totally she's. A, I'm pretty sure she's on each other's island, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, that desert island, or the, do you all have a list of like five people? Like, I don't even know what we have. It's just like it's just.